Greetings everyone and welcome to the latest edition of the Mobile IT Community of Interest monthly meeting. Thank you very much for joining us today. Before we get started, I'd like to review how to use the GoToWebinar system in order to optimise your experience. Briefly explain how you can interact with these community um, sessions using the GoToWebinar system. You've all been put on default mute settings due to lots of participants on the call. However, you can get the audio over telephone or the speakers of your computer, which may improve sound quality. By the way, the panel is set to hide automatically. Please use the orange arrow to show how or show how or hide the control panel at your, at your own will. You can change these settings on the view menu at the top of the panel. You're encouraged to please forward any questions that come up during the presentation using the questions tab. Uh, your questions will be read after the featured presentation. We'll, we will identify who is asking the question in order to foster participation and interaction. If you'd like to remain anonymous, just say so. We'll also have a live poll session at the end, which uh, you're able to answer from the screen by clicking on the choices provided. Finally, at the end of the meeting, we'll have a follow-up survey. Please respond to these questions so we can incorporate your feedback into the work of the community. Thanks, and we will now start the presentation. I'm Stuart Young, and I represent Fiatech in Europe and the Middle East. On behalf of us all at Fiatech, I'd like to thank you for joining us today for the Mobile IT Community of Interest monthly meeting. Today's presenter is Greg Smith of Skanska. Greg will show an approach to improve the performance of our site teams through appropriate selection and use of technologies. Before we get into the presentation, I'd like to take a minute to introduce this community of interest uh, to those who are not members of Fiatech and have not participated in the community before. The objective of this community is to showcase the mobility solutions that will be adopted in the capital projects industry. We strive to achieve this goal by presenting the latest use cases of mobile IT adoption and also by allowing the breadth of the community participants to expose their perspective on these technology applications. We have been delivering use cases and industry perspectives through various channels, including these monthly meetings, uh, both virtual and live discussion, documentation and reports from the gatherings, and also by facilitating the creation of research and development projects within the organization. Furthermore, this community is a joint effort between Fiatech and Comet. Um, Fiatech, as you know, or may know, is, is a member-based organization with the objective of improving the productivity of the capital projects industry through the deployment of technology. The goal is to improve productivity in the capital projects sector through the adequate leadership in global development and adoption of innovation. Comet is a UK-based organization whose principal aim is to learn from the experience of delivering measurable business benefits in terms of adoption of mobile technologies. So as such, the partnership supports the work and objectives of the community. The community of interest is now way over a year old, 15 months in fact. Um, we've had more than 1,390 participants from over 400 organizations located in 42 countries around the globe. Mainly participants are located in North America and Europe as we continue to expand in the Middle East as well as South America. We're very glad with the industry's response so far and we are continuously working to meet the needs of our participants. A uh, couple of announcements. Uh, this Friday, July 10th, we will be sending out a brief survey to, to research um, on the current state of implementation for mobile technology in the industry. The survey will be sent out to all community participants and the output will be a report to inform the community of how the industry is approaching implementation process across the range of mobile IT field personnel. We also want to give you a reminder on the European Conference in London in November. This is the Efficiency Through Digital Projects 2015 session. Uh, it's a joint session between Fiatech and Comet. And included in the sessions um, will be topics such as integrated construction management through cross-functional collaboration and real-time reporting, social mobile analytics and cloud as part of the new enterprise model, Future proofing and BIM for owner operators, practical applications for art artificial intelligence, um, the use of mobile IT for as built data capture and collaboration. There are many others, we just listed a few there. The call for papers um, is still available. You can find out more information on the website or contact me directly. 
Now I'll move on to the main presentation um, and Greg Smith will take us through uh, the new method to access latest progress information in his presentation entitled Improve Site Team Performance with Appropriate Technologies for Workforce Management. Greg is the VDC Director for Skanski USA Building. He brings 24 years experience developed at an executive level leadership position provided engineering technical services to the architectural engineering and construction industry while managing developing sales and marketing strategies that facilitate the success of the service. Greg has also served as an educator and adjunct professor in developing architectural and engineering drafting stroke design curriculum and providing instruction in various software applications. Greg, I'll now pass it over to you. Most of the time, he'll have his cell phone with him. He may have an iPad, but he's totally away from his computer until five or six o'clock at night. Some of the different ways we communicate: we communicate through email and instant messenger, tw uh, Twitter, Yammer, GoTo, meaning a variety of different ways. And if you're connected, that's great. If you're disconnected, you may have a cell phone that you get email and uh, text done. But uh, you know some of these other ways to communicate it might be a challenge. On the left hand side of the screen you see a snapshot of my cell phone and this happens to be on March 5th at 12.07 in the afternoon. And if you look at the lower left you see I have 62 unread emails and I try and stay up on my emails every day so I may have a few in there from the day before but from the, the start you know the day until noon I've got 62 unread emails. So if you send me an email that's pretty lengthy, has three paragraphs with questions that I need to answer, I'm probably not going to get, a, uh, get to it very quickly. You know, if it's a short email, I can respond pretty quickly, especially if I'm sitting in meetings. So some of the how we work takeaways. Working hours may vary. Some people get to the job sites early, some people get there a little bit later. When we're working with architects, they typically show up a lot later than we do. They may work longer as well. And then roles and responsibilities are different. Some people are sitting in the office all day, some people are totally out in the field all day. So we have to be, uh, we have to recognize those differences. And then connectivity is not always possible, not just being away from the computer, but some of our job sites may have connectivity, they may not. And then keep emails uh, very short if you want a quick response. Like, if you have a question, send me a question in just one sentence. So technology. Technology is great. And I want to tell you about a new service that's out there. Um, but it, sometimes it can be a little bit too much. So this is that meeting that I went to on March 5th. I got an invite. So I get an email. It's an invitation to a working lunch meeting. Okay. And it asks if I'm going to be there and if, if they're going to bring in lunch, is there any dietary restrictions? I respond to the email saying, yes, I'll be there. No dietary restrictions. So then I get the next email and it tells me that, okay, they're going to have lunch and now I have to click on this uh, other, this link in the email to go to a website to order my food. As soon as I do that, I get a third email that tells me, yes, you've ordered your food. It's going to be delivered on March 5th at around noon. The day of the meeting, I'm sitting there in the meeting with my 62 unread emails and I get a fourth email telling me that my food is on the way. And then I'm sitting in a conference room with a glass wall that looks right at the front door of the office. I see the food show up, but I get an email telling me my food has arrived. My point with this is I've got five emails here, plus I had to go to a website to order my food just to have lunch. To me, that, that's technology overload. This is, a, this is a snapshot of my uh, desktop, but this is several years ago. This was back in 2011. We use a lot of Autodesk products, and Autodesk is very good about coming out with a new version every year. Even when we've sat down with them and told them we would prefer they do it every two or three years, but they come out with a new version every year. And if you look at my screen, you can see I have several versions of AutoCAD. I have several versions of Revit. I have several versions of Navisworks. 
And then over on the right hand side, you see my C drive. That's where I keep all my programs loaded. It's a 238 gigabyte uh, solid state hard drive. And I only have 13 gigabytes left. So when I install the next version of AutoCAD Revit and Navisworks, I'm going to be out of disk space. So it, it takes a lot to manage the, the disk space too with the number of versions of software that we constantly have to have. Technology overload on a recent project. We had four PDF readers, over five model authoring programs, three coordination programs, three scheduling programs, and we use Excel for everything. We use Excel for estimating, for scheduling, along with these other programs. So if it's my project, I'm only going to have one PDF reader. And one of the reasons is, is it, it gets confusing for people using more than one PDF reader. And if we have to deploy that to a large project, now I have to go train everybody to how to use those PDF readers as well. Or a coordination program. I'm not sure why we had three different coordination programs. One is sufficient. This is a recent uh, model that we got from a designer. And uh, the first thing you look at there, if, if, you know, the first thing I see anyway, is it doesn't have any grid lines and there's no dimensions. So when we went back to the designer and said, hey, you know what, we need some dimensions to build this from. The designer said, you have the model, you can figure it out. And we don't quite live in a model-centric world yet. We still have to build from paper. So this is a situation where we didn't have enough information. We did have it in the model. We could add the dimensions if we wanted, but we needed uh, needed added to the, the model, and then we print it out on paper as well or into a PDF. So this is some old technology. This is the very first telephone. And then we have the old uh, rotary dial-up telephone. I can't even imagine using a, a dial-up phone like that anymore. My kids don't even know what it is because we have all these, you know, our variety of cell phones these days. But do you remember when we used the cell to make phone calls, or our phone to make phone calls? Okay, we are losing the lost art of verbal communication, especially the young people coming into our companies these days. They use the phone for texting and for getting into Twitter and things like that. Very rarely do they pick it up to make a phone call. Uh, so about a few years ago, there was an article in the New York Times, and it was um, a story about these five neurosurgeons that went on a vacation. They went on a rafting trip, and they decided to leave their cell phones behind. And what that did is it actually sparked some research that they did. And what they found was when you have your cell phone, and it, um, you, you're anticipating getting a phone call, you're anticipating getting a text or an email, and it's actually taking brain power for that anticipation. So they had a couple different recommendations. And one of those um, was that the, uh, when you're anticipating uh, this information coming in, like a text or an email, is taking the brain power. If, if you leave the uh, cell phone off, for a little while is actually recharging your brain. So one of the recommendations they had was like when you go out to lunch, you leave your cell phone behind and it actually recharges your brain. So some of the uh, technology takeaways. Be conscious of amount of technology in use. Are we using too much technology? If we have four PDF readers on a project, I would say that's too much. Use your phone calls, uh, phone for calls too. Okay, again, especially with younger guy, uh, people coming into the offices. Make sure they understand how to pick up the phone and make a phone call. And understand the use of the off button. It does work. It turns your phone off. I was on a recent vacation trip with my wife and kids, and I decided to take a technology vacation. They decided not to. And so one night I locked their cell phones in the hotel safe. It was not a good thing, especially with my wife. So a paperless job site, digital resource stations in a paperless office. What is a digital resource station? A lot of people call them kiosks. We happen to call it a digital resource station. It's basically a big monitor with a computer locked in a watertight uh, box. Some of the things you can do with a digital, digital resource station. We can have contract documents linked to RFIs. We have shop drawings, safety orientation videos, our BIM models, MSDS sheets, virgin See contact list, emergency response kit. We have a first aid kit in every one of our digital resource stations. Uh, 
This is a view of contract document with a, a hyperlink there. We click on the hyperlink, it opens up our RFI. We also have our BIM models there. So it's a large monitor. You can see we can have our model and the documents up on the screen at the same time. This is one of our first digital resource stations. We had a carpenter just go out and cut a bunch of plywood up and make a box, put the monitor in there, and had the computer and a printer and everything else inside the box. These are placed throughout the job site, and it's really something to, to go into a job site and see subcontractors, on, you know, on all your field crew standing around talking about the project right there on the monitor. We also have them in the office and in the trailers. Okay, again, it's just a big monitor tied to a computer. And we push the same information out to cell phones, out to iPads. So why do we have it? Okay, so most current drawings and project information at your fingertips. As soon as you print out documents and there's a change, they're out of date. Okay, but when we have it in an electronic format and we can push it out to all these different places, and everybody has the same information and it's the most current information. It also saves travel time between office and trailer, uh, or the trailer and the construction site. Okay, and I'll talk about that in a little bit. And then printing costs versus a, a digital resource station cost. There is a cost to buy a monitor and put it in a box, but on a large project, the printing costs can be hundreds of thousands of dollars. So the old process, the old manual process, you know, as soon as we print out the, the paper documents and there's a change, then we have a project engineer that has, or multiple project engineers, that have to chase down all those drawing sets and update them. The newer process is we have one person sitting at a computer updating all these documents uh, in the computer and then pushing them out to digital resource stations, pushing them out to iPads, pushing them out to Box or an FTP site. Okay, so a couple different metrics for the digital resource stations. A large hospital project in the Northwest, it was 15 minutes from the job site to the construction trailers. So if you can imagine somebody leaving the job site to walk up to the, the construction trailer, they have a smoke along the way, they stop in the trailer, they, they get a cup of coffee, and then they're talking to their buddies, and then they get the question answered, and then they walk back to the, to the field. That's taking at least an hour or two. Okay, and if you have a few people sitting around in, in the field waiting for that answer, it's taking a lot of time. Okay, and the second metric is, you know, uh, on that project, it was a $200,000 printing cost. Okay, the digital resource stations cost around $10,000 a piece with all the equipment that we had in them. So that's $30,000. We were able to save at least $70,000 on the job just with those digital resource stations. I believe that's my last slide. So, Stuart, back to you. Hi, Greg. Um, I don't know you hear me, Greg, can you? Greg, can you hear me? I can hear yeah. This, yeah I can hear this, you. this is from uh, Thomas Strong. How many DRS do you have on the sites? Uh, on a large site, we'd have, like, uh, that large hospital project. It was a nine-story nine um, hospital. We had three of them. So every couple of floors. Right. We don't have one on necessarily every floor, but we'll have one on every two or three floors. Okay. Um, are you using mobile devices to video conference? Um, Michigan DLT has been using FaceTime to show field issues to folks in the design office. That's um, from uh, Francesca Mayer. Uh, we, we do. Yeah, it's great. Yeah. Okay. Um, we we did a re recent study on uh, virtual, yeah, virtual collaboration. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, the the other it's more of a statement I think uh, from again Thomas Strong. Um, so you have the DRS on 
the sites and it's across the company. I think that's the question. Is that correct? What do you mean it's across the company? It is across the company in, in, in terms of deployment. I think that's the question. Oh, yeah, but, it, you know, um, the, it, it depends on the size of the project. Sure. Okay. But, yeah, it's a company-wide initiative. Yeah, okay. Another question I've got here is um, to roll these out, was the Met... Was there any resistance when, when these things were introduced at the site, um, at any of the individual sites with people who were maybe not um, as, as user friendly as might be? So there, there's two points of resistance. One is the cost. So, I mean, we still have a lot of people that, that see the cost first and not the benefit, um, especially on a smaller project. You know, they, they might not want to pay for uh the, the cost of it. The other point of resistance is we had uh, one that got sent to a job site, but uh, our IT guys didn't didn't put any software on it or anything. So here's a box that shows up with a TV monitor and a computer, but it's not connected or anything. Um, so the, we have to make it just really simple for the job sites to be able to start it. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. And I suppose as time goes on, it gets easier. Uh, people will be familiar with it for, for the next project, I suppose. Um, I've got another question here that, that's from Francesca. Thank you very much. Um, what are you using for document management? We, we use a variety of different technologies, and it depends on the job site. Um, some we're just using like Box.com or Dropbox. We use SharePoint. Um, a lot of our projects are using DocuPro, um, which is, a, I believe that's McGraw-Hill. Okay. Thank you. The next question that's come in from uh, Thomas again. Thank you. Uh, are you able to justify the cost of the DRS to the client by proving the paper savings? Uh, act, yeah, actually, um, many of our clients, as soon as they see it, We'll put uh, we'll put one in their office as well. So um, I mean, it, it, as soon as they see how all the documents are updated immediately, um, they want that as well. And so yeah, there's there's very very little resistance on that end. So so the client um, by doing that you've created quite a bit of goodwill and and also um, acting proactively would help to a smoother relation with with the client, no doubt. Yeah, absolutely. And transparency. I mean, they get to see everything right away as well. Sure, sure. Well, that's great. Um, well, I've no more questions come in here. So I think what I might do is just I think that's the last of the questions. Um, I'll just drop in. Oh, wait a minute. Have I got another one? Yes, I've got another one. Uh, Francesca, thanks again. Um, <laughs> you can keep going. Great. Um, are you using them for data entry, e.g. digital red lines? Uh, yes, um, and we use a variety of different uh, technologies for that. So Bluebeam, um, actually, uh, we have many, many Bluebeam users in our company. Um, so they have Bluebeam sessions where they'll mark things up. Um, we also use Plan Grid, which does the same thing. So, oh. oh, great, great. Okay. All right, another one. Thanks, Francesca. Um, another one that's that's arrived. What are the main challenges, e.g., the need for digital signatures? Some document types you can't get paperless. The we, we put a list together of all the documents that can be electronic, and there's very few uh, documents. And I, I, I probably should have put that in this slide deck. There's very few documents that can't be electronic. Um, and then just recently. Uh, you know, a year ago, our contracts couldn't be electronic, but uh, now we're using DocuSign, so those can be electronic as well. Great, great. Thank you. Okay, next question is coming from Thomas uh, Strong again. Uh, what are you using for 3D on site with iPads or alike? Autodesk 360 question mark. Yeah, I mean, so we use, um, typically we use Navisworks for uh, coordination and uh, BIM 360 glue. So for the iPads, we're using BIM 360 Clue. We've used other things like uh, BIM Anywhere, um, but BIM 360 Clue is the one we're using most mostly today. 
Okay, great, great. Um, well, I've, I've no more questions there, so I'm going to switch to the uh, to the polls now. Um, just give me one second to bring this up on the screen. Okay, we have three questions here. And the first question is, how many model authoring programs do you use on a typical project? So I'll just punch that one in and launch that. I'll give you 15 seconds for that one. Okay, uh, I think that's everybody's answered. Close that, and I'll share it. So 60% say one to two, 20% three to four, 10% five or more, 10% other not applicable. Yeah, interesting. Okay, the next poll question, how do you typically communicate on site? Launch that one. Okay, so we've got 9% by phone, 64% by email, 9% by texting. Nothing surprisingly by social media. Um, and 18% other not applicable. Share that. You want to comment on any of these, Greg? Just jump in. <laughs> that that one, yeah, that that proves my point that we're losing the law start of verbal verbal communication. Yeah. <laughs> okay, the last um, the last poll question. Does your does your firm use digital resource stations, kiosks, or on construction sites? Either in the field, in the office, planning on using them, planning on using them on the next project, other not applicable. Close that one out, just share the results. 23% in the field, 54% in the office, 46% um, other or not applicable. Interesting. Well, thanks everybody for voting on those. Um, very useful information. Okay, I'll, uh, I'll just move on and I'll continue with the social media aspects. I'd like to say thanks everybody for coming on today. That's the first thing. Um, we have shortened this presentation to 30 minutes. Um, we are planning to resume again uh, next month. We'll send the notices out beforehand. Um, the survey will be this week, Friday. Please watch out for that. Um, let's continue the conversation. Um, the social media links are there. Um, please join the community on LinkedIn for all the announcements. Uh, we will upload the recordings to the usual location on YouTube. Um, and again, you can get that through the FearTech website. Um, thanks very much for spending time today with us. Thanks to Greg, um, thanks to Fernando, uh, and thanks to our usual contributors. And uh, we'll see you all on the next one. Thank you very much. Thanks, Greg. Yeah, thank you, Stuart. Thanks, Fernando. Thank you. Thank you, Greg. Cheers now. Thanks. Bye-bye.